What are you doing? Well, hi yes, there. Marissa. Just kidding. Yeah, it is. Yes, it is. What that one? Yeah. The one on Skype? Yeah. Can you see the one on Marissa? No. Marissa? You can't see Marissa. Yeah, you can't see Oh. oh this one right here. Go back, go back. I see her, so she moved around. Right there, right there, right there. Sorry. She would. She would. She would. There's that one right there, visual three. There's that one. Okay. Yeah. Hello. What's up, Amy? Hey, how are you? Uh, pretty good. Richard, you there? You can raise your chair up. <laughs> Richard, you there? Yes, I'm here. Accidentally punched a button. All right, so Edith, can you go to the control room? Down a bit better. Yeah, that's fine. I was going to say turn it up a little bit. There we go. All right, so you guys ready? Yeah. Yes. Brianna, you start yours. Marlon, you start yours. Jocelyn, you start both yours. Yeah. All right, Justin, you good? Yeah. Bree? Yeah. Edith? Yeah. Marlon? <clears throat> All right, here we go. Start in, Start in three, two, one. What's up, y'all? Welcome to the Sports Medicine Broadcast, Episode 78, <laughs> Tech in the Sports Medicine Classroom, Take 2. Recorded April 25th, 2014. Today, our special guest is Richard Davis and Amy Salinas of Magnolia West High School. This is the second time we tried to do this. Last time, uh, as as should be, when we're talking about tech in the classroom, all of our technology was just busted. So they were having trouble with their audio over there. We were having trouble with our computers just sh shutting down over here. Um, and so we're gonna we're trying this again. And I'm I'm thankful that they're able and willing to to jump back on and give it again, give it a shot again today. So, I am your host Jeremy Jackson, and with me today is George, Morning, Edith, Brianna, Jocelyn, Marissa, Lorena. Jocelyn, I like how you forgot your name there for a second. <laughs> All right, <laughs> if you want to join our conversation, almost every single Wednesday, sportsmedicinebroadcast.com. You can use hashtag VSB. You should be able to use that on Google Plus or on Twitter, and then it should be able to show up there with Brianna or with Edith watching. Both of them are watching the, the comment thing there. If you're watching it on Ustream, you can use the social feature, and uh, then Marlon will see that there. Todaysmeet.com slash sportsmedicinebroadcast, which typically tends to be better for students in a high school to use. It's a little bit easier. Um, and George is also watching that here. So, again, all those are on our website at sportsmedicinebroadcast.com. All right, um, so upcoming, we have a couple different things. I, Speaking of technology in the classroom, uh, I've been looking at kind of rebranding or doing a different logo. And so one of the things that we're doing is actually with the digital art. I went to the, the teacher there, and uh, his students each came up with a different concept for our, our new logo. And so we've been in the process of them designing that and then me updating it picking which ones and what I like and what I don't like. And so pretty soon, maybe this summer, we'll reveal the, the new logo for the sports medicine broadcast. It'll be a little bit more than just the real simple one that I have. Uh, so I'm pretty excited about that. And again, that's using technology, but free stuff because I'm using the, the people here at the school and the skills and the students are actually going to be the ones that um, did all the work to, to put it together, come up with the design. Um, and so I'm, it's pretty cool. I'm excited about being able to incorporate the students and the things that they're learning here. So, all right. So that's uh, all I got there for the warm up. So we'll go ahead and jump right into it. 
Miss Selena, can you tell us a little about yourself and what you do? For Miss Selena, Amy. For, for Amy? Oh, okay. So what we do, um, well, I'm the assistant athletic trainer here at Magnolia West High School. Uh, so as far as tech in the classroom, we have a whole bunch of stuff that we try to incorporate. So the biggest things that we use for our students are um, the Google Hangout videos. So we'll record videos for um, tests and we upload them to our website. And so our students can go on there, look at our videos, or they can go onto our YouTube page, look at their videos, uh, study for their tests that way. Uh, let's see, we also use, um, what do we here? Remind 101 is something that we use. TV message boards, and Richard can go into a lot of all this stuff. Um, so. Yeah, we, um, we also use Microsoft Access, which is a database program that we use that to run our uh, paperwork and et cetera, our database. Um, the great thing about Access is that we don't have to pay the fee for using a commercial program, but at the same time, it is virtually as powerful. The only problem with it is, is that it's not an online uh, type program. We also have created our own concussion program that's online. We do our own safety program through SB82 uh, legislation that's online. Like Amy said, we use Dropbox. We put our physicals online. We're in the process of actually accepting digital physical or dis digital uh, signatures for our parents. I figure if somebody can sign up a mortgage paper for half a million dollars online with uh, a digital signature, I would think UIL would probably accept that that paperwork also. Amy does a great job using Google Docs and we track our treatments online. Um, so at any time a coach can come in and or go on their computer and we can share exactly if a kid's been here or not. So anytime that there's a piece of tech that, uh, that's available, uh, we certainly use it, and I heard that uh, Mr. Jackson was talking about doing a brand new graphic, and technology plays a huge por portion in graphics, and I remember you have um, vector graphics, and then you have raster graphics, and you want to make sure that when you do your graphics, you do them in vector graphics, because anytime that it's either expanded or shrunk, it works on an algorithm as opposed to pixels. So that way there's no uh, distortion in the graphics. So if you want to put it on a big banner, it's just as great as if you just make a, a graphic that's uh, small for a t-shirt. So, because the uh, the graphic arts teacher he said, you know, and these will all be vector files when we send them to you. And I was like, oh, okay, whatever that means. I just know a vector is a, a line with the with direction in math, right? Uh, Isn't that right? Yes, yes. yes but. Uh, <laughs> You can do it in, in some Adobe programs, but at the best time, if you can find somebody that can take it and translate it into into vector, it's great. That way that each individual color that you might have on it would have its own vector algorithm with it. Okay. Well, good. Thanks for explaining that. All right. So um, get much more into all the ways and some of the details of how you guys use the tech. Uh, just tell us a little bit about actually who you are. I know in your bio, and I'll have the show notes on, on the link on the website, but just tell us a little bit about who you are. So it says, you know, Amy graduated from Auburn and uh, with her master's degree, some of the stuff like that. And you got about 40 different things listed down here for uh, awards or details and that kind of thing. So Amy, why don't you start us off telling us just a little bit about who you are, where you're from. Okay, so I did my undergraduate degree at Texas State University, uh, did the whole four-year program there, uh, sat for my DOC and my LAT at that time, so I've been certified since 2012. Uh, after that, I went to get my master's degree from Auburn University, and while I was there, I was a graduate assistant. So my assistantship consisted of me actually driving out to Columbus, Georgia, where Fort Benning, the Army base, is located. And I worked with um, Army recruits going through basic training. And so that was a really great experience for me. It's one of the, you know, there aren't very many athletic trainers in that setting. So it was a great experience being able to work in a non-traditional athletic training setting and see how um, athletic trainers operate there. It was great, and being able to work with, you know, Army cadre and um, civilians there, and it was just a great experience. And then from there, graduated in I, August with my degree, somewhere in there, maybe it was June. 
Um, and then I came to Magnolia West, and I've been the assistant athletic trainer to Richard Davis, and we've made a pretty good team, and we've done a good, great job, I think, so far. So, And I love it here. Um, it's been a great experience for me being back at the high school. So. So when you're working on the army base, was there is there a, like a full time athletic trainer there, or do they just have interns there? How does that normally work? Well, they changed it this year. The year that I was there, it was just graduate assistants, and we would go in the morning. We would be there at 5 a.m. and we would um, cover from 5 a.m. to about 9 9:30, uh, and that was just their like morning PT. Um, some of their training events we would cover, whether they were doing like rappel tower, or obstacle courses, um, and then we'd come back to Auburn, go to class, and then in the evening, another there was three people per battalion, so two people in the morning, one person in the afternoon, and they would go and just do extra treatments or cover, like I said, training events. Um, and so now they have it to where <clears throat> they have full times all the time, and so they're not just with basic trainees; they are with like the ranger school, they're with combative school, uh, with a whole bunch of different schools, and they're they're full time, um, and they also have graduate assistants, so they have a combination of the two now. Gotcha. Very interesting. Of you know, often said that they have athletic trainers in the military, but I've never spoken with anybody that's had that experience. So. Yeah, it's it's very rare. It's a hard niche to get into. It's one of those things where you got to know somebody. So it was fun. It was a great experience. All right. Well, I might have to get with you sometime and figure out how we can get in contact with one of those people and then go from there. Yeah, certainly. George, you want to be in the military? Yeah. George said he wants to be in the military and an athletic trainer. So. Oh, well, there you go. Hey, you got one contact. <laughs> All of our networking. <laughs> All right. So, Richard, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, I'm just an old man that's been in athletic training all my life. That's... <laughs> My father was an athletic trainer, so uh, following uh, those huge footsteps, it um, led me here to Magnolia West. Um, I've worked in many different settings. I've worked with um, uh, everything from junior high, junior high sports, club sports, to um, we even I've, I've worked with uh, the World League of American Football. I've worked with, we actually covered, uh, now this one was probably the, one of the coolest things I ever covered, was the U.S. World, uh, or the U.S. Figure Skating Championships, and th those people are super athletes, um, but um, it's it's just uh, a passion, and if you don't have the passion in it anymore, maybe you go into sales, maybe you go into something else, but you, you've got to be passionate about athletic training, taking care of kids, being an advocate for the kids and the families, as well as, as having your coaches back. And um, uh, just um, if you just continue to, to do those things, then you just get to add little things onto your resume like what I've sent you. Um, not here to, to just spend my time on this. I'd rather these kids learn about how to use this technology and, and knock this stuff out. All right, well, that's good enough then. So uh, your dad was an athletic trainer for most of his life too? Uh, yeah, he was um, He was uh, a guy named Otho Davis. The NATA building was named after him. He was the executive director of the NATA from 1971 until about 1990. Um, so um, he was the one who negotiated the first contract with Gatorade. And uh, it's a pretty funny little story about how all that how all that went about. Pe Pepsi was trying to get in with their product, which Pepsi never maybe it was Coca Cola, but at the time it was Stokely Van Camps that actually owned Gatorade. And uh, it was a pretty neat little story about how they finally got a seven a seven figure deal out of Gatorade to to sponsor the National Athletic Trainers Association. Yeah, and, uh, that's interesting because uh, Bubba Wilson he's over here a lot, and he was. Uh, I think he worked with your with your dad a good bit or something because he tells a lot of stories about Otho. And so, you know, to me it was just somebody that was somewhere, an athletic trainer, I don't know, but I guess it now brings it a little bit closer to, to home. So, It's pretty close for me, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we would we would spend uh, we would spend evenings putting like this. That was all before technology, and everything had to be sent out. Huge, great big three inch notebooks would be sent to the board of directors, and so he had uh, three sons sitting at home. So that meant he had three little minions, and and he certainly <laughs> was the the lead of the the leader of the minions. So we should just call him Gru. Have you seen that? Uh, <laughs> Yep. <laughs> All right. So we're going to get to uh, some of the other questions more about your uh, sports and medicine. Maybe we'll talk more about your dad at some point. But okay. Mr. Davis, how many classes of sports medicine do you teach? Well, what we have now is we actually have three classes of sports medicine, and uh, the reason that we keep it in uh, different class. And next year we might go to four, but then we might slow down the seniors and bring the juniors up to up to to catch them. Um, but we have. Three, uh, three classes, and it'll be the freshmen, and what we consider freshmen is going to be a freshman level in the training room. And so that class will show up at the end of the day, and the reason they show up at the end of the day is is that's when we really have to do a lot of prep. Um, and if you know, there's a hierarchy in just about everything that they're uh, – as far as your work and your professional level. And those at the bottom of the totem pole, you either weed them out by working them longer, or they get stronger and uh, they do a great job. And then you make you make somebody who's got some good character, and you find out that those people are really dedicated. The second class will be during uh, one of our other athletic periods, which is actually right now. And then the third class will be during varsity sports during fifth period. And so they all learn during football what we call the beast, because it is a beast in its own in its own right uh during football we don't have a whole lot of time to teach because we are not on a block schedule and uh so we take care of the practices and so forth and then once football is over then we start breaking out the powerpoints and the and the notes and uh and yes they take tests and they're pretty thorough tests and so it just depends upon how far along each group is before they go up into the next class but we have three three actual classes and then maybe four next year all right, so on there you're talking about using PowerPoints with the kids, and I've, I've watched one of the two, one or two of the videos that you do, the video reviews, um, and you said Amy uses Google Docs a lot. Is there a reason that you're using PowerPoint, or is that just just a a, a common word that you use? No, you actually, PowerPoint is a whole lot more powerful than what some of these things that you, Google has a a great little niche as far as. Um, being able to do things online, but once you put something online and you take it off of a hard drive, you're going to have to um, free up a whole lot of um, workspace as far as your coding. And so, things that you can do within uh, PowerPoint or Word or whatnot are going to be some things that's not going to be able to be done through an online uh, an online service such as uh, the Google Docs, but each of them has their place. But the real reason that we actually use PowerPoint is is that a lot of these slides I've had around for probably 10 to 15 years, and it's just a whole lot easier to either add to them or, or, or delete something from it than it is to create the wheel over and over and over just because a different program has come out. All right. Bill and I have... We've more or less gone to Google Docs for everything just because if I'm sitting in the classroom and he's sitting in the training room, we don't have two computers or we don't even have an office in there. It's just one computer and then it's just one open room. And so, you know, if we're working on something, he can work on it there. I can work on it here. He can come work on it here. If I'm up in the classroom, you know, up in the school building somewhere, I could pull it up and work on it or on my phone. So that's one of the reasons we've gone to Google Docs for more or less everything just because it's easier to keep it and store it there so well we do share everything on a common drive a network drive so whether we're at home or whether we're um, in one training room or another Amy and I pretty much can get a hold of everything and the the great thing about it though is is that if she's got something open that I want to try to um, edit and it will tell you then that this is open and you can only view it in a non-edit mode and that makes it forces us to talk to each other <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, it forces us to talk to each other. <laughs> Mr. Davis, can you tell us about your sports medicine program? Um, certainly. I think one of the things that we believe in is Baskin-Robbins. I, I would imagine you all like ice cream, right? 
And when you go to Baskin Robbins, it's got 31 flavors. And so when you go into Baskin Robbins, they give you a pink spoon, and that should be what high school is like. Every kid that walks through the door the first day of a freshman orientation, you should get a pink spoon. And you should be able to try anything that you want until you find something that you either have a liking for or a true passion for. And that's what we think here. We'll take it just about anybody into our program. And if it works, we are so happy. And if it doesn't work, we're still so happy. You got, you got, you had the ability to try something. And um, I had a job uh, one time, and my father was asking me, he goes, well, uh, what do you think about your job? You sound like you're really on top of the world. And I said, I love it, Dad. I get to, I get to teach people uh, sports medicine, and, and they can take that knowledge and go out and, and be athletic trainers. And I thought I was being honorable. And he says, you got it all wrong, son. That's not your, that's not your job. I said, well, all right. What's my job? And he says, your job is to find out what – uh, your students want. What do they want to do in life? And then you facilitate their dreams as opposed to putting your dreams on them. And I sat and I thought real quickly, wow, this guy is pretty smart. So instead, we don't, we don't, we're not trying here to make little minions for, uh, for us to take care of everything. We go through each one of these students that come through. What do you want to do? If you want to be a photographer, we'll find you a photographer. I'll bring a camera in. Your job at the ball game then is to take pictures. Uh, if you want to be a physical therapist, we'll get you an internship at one of the PT places that, um, that we do business with. If you want to be a physician, we'll find a physician that you can shadow. So our sports medicine program really is is that we're gonna, if you're in the class, you're going to learn what you have to learn while you're here. And we insist that it, it, one is going to make them a better student later in life because it's a really slowed down version of a college course called Prevention and Care. And then two, it's going to make them a better mother. Uh, so if you take a sports medicine class, you don't freak out. If you have kids 10 years down the road and your son fell out of the tree and he broke his arm, you're probably going to tell them, quit crying, put some ice on it, and let's go. So our sports medicine program is, is pretty much designed to um, – to take care of not just the athletes, but also um, the student, the student athletic trainer. And within our mission statement, our primary goal is to provide quality medical coverage, including prevention, recognition, treatment, etc. But our secondary goal is to get to know and understand each stu student and learn what their goals are in life and do whatever we can do in helping them achieve their own goals. So that's pretty much how we look at it as far as our sports medicine program. And in doing it, and doing it this way, we, uh, we constantly see our numbers grow in, in students. It's, yeah, it's a really good <clears throat> philosophy. We've start, you know, obviously we want pictures, and so we have had some students that are good at taking pictures. And, and so you know, we don't have a really good camera, but some of them do, so we ask them to bring it. And then um, I've also you know, gone over there and talked to the photographers that are on the sidelines, the professional ones, and say, hey, you know, some of my students are interested in doing this. Would you mind talking to them for a few minutes while y'all are out here? And so, you know, I'll just send them over there to talk to them during the game so they're still there doing their job, but they're getting a chance to meet somebody that is potentially their boss or, you know, a, a networking opportunity like we said earlier, so. Yes, tell us more about how y'all are using tech in the classroom. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. What did you say? Can you tell us more about how y'all are using tech in the classroom? Oh, yeah, certainly. Okay, so one of the, the things that we do, so when our classes come in, we have a TV out in our training room, and so it we have a message board, and so it's something that flashes, you know, fourth period, these are your duties for today. You get the water ready for your sports, or clean the tables, or let's get ready for fifth period. And I can do a screen share here and kind of show you what this looks like. So in case you're new to Google Hangouts, screen share is just what it sounds like. She's sharing her screen. So what she is seeing, she's sharing with us so that if she's working on a document, if she's watching a YouTube video or something like that. She's sharing that so that we can all see that and then okay, share the so screen. Can you guys see this? Yep. 
I don't know if you can see. Can you can you see that, Richard? It's all black right now, but yeah, yeah. I don't see it. Well, it might not work on this. Um, because it's. I mean, I can see it online, so I don't know if it, it's just not working for it to show up on that computer. But basically, what it's doing is it is um, flashing just you know their their uh, daily duties. Uh, and that'll come up on the computer. We use it with just a USB, and it shows like a movie, and it'll play on loop. Um, another thing that we use is Remind 101, and I absolutely love this because it's a way to get in contact with our students um, quick and easily. It's basically an online um, thing here, and I can screen share it. And this just will send a, a text message, you can see here. Um, this is kind of how it works. One of the last, and it'll send, it's just a mass text. One of the last ones that I sent out was for fourth period because they're starting to letter for athletic trainer. And it says, those of you who lettered this year, I have your letterman jacket packet. Please stop by after school to pick them up. So that's a quick, easy way for us to let them know, like even on game days, hey, let's wear our maroon polos today, uh, khaki pants, or you know, let them know that there's a change in, oh, baseball location has changed or something like that, and it's an easy way to let them know. All right, so on that, on, on Remind 101, how, is there a reason you use that versus just like a group text? Because, I mean, all of my student trainers, actually most of the people in my sports medicine class have my phone number. Is And I know some teachers aren't okay with that, but we're not just regular teachers. So um, tell me more about why you choose to use Remind 101 over regular text. Uh, it's just... For me, it's easy because I'm already sitting at the computer. Um, it's going to text every single person in my class or who's um, subscribed to the site instead of me looking and saying, oh, did I leave somebody out or, um, you know, making sure that they all get the same message across the board. Uh, I know sometimes in text messaging it's easy for someone to just make, like, groups, and that's okay, too. I just, we prefer this because it's a safe, easy way to say, to communicate with our kids as opposed to text messaging. They all have our telephone numbers for, you know, emergency reasons or to call us and let us know, like, if there's a kid down somewhere that needs us to be there. Um, but most of the time, sitting at the computer, it's really easy for me to just send out one big mass text or text through the computer this way. And it's got some really neat features such as let's say that we um, just got in from a ball game and it's midnight. And, uh, of course, we're not going to want to text somebody at midnight. These kids never turn these phones off even though they should. Um, but you can send it up, set it up to where it can text at a later time. So if you've got reminders that just run into your head and you know how busy we are, sometimes we might forget to say, okay, we need to remind these kids about this on Friday. So it might be Tuesday. I can set it up. To, so you can set it up to where when you put that message in, it'll go out Thursday night at nine o'clock. So mm -hmm. there's there's some features on that. The other thing is is that you can also allow your parents to join in, and uh, then you can text both groups with the same message. Go ahead. Sorry, that was my phone. It does have a nice mobile app, so we're able to do it on the bus if we're riding back from somewhere. So Remind 101 is really a, it, it's a pretty cool little tool. And they've actually, I think they've actually got on Remind 101. I think they've gotten to where now you can you can add attachments. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see, I have an account. I just haven't used it. And um, actually for GHADs, we've just started using it so we could actually communicate there, you know, like, Last year, two years ago, with GHADs, the golf tournament got canceled, so then they tried to get everybody together for a social, and there was no easy way to communicate that. So that's what, that's what we're trying to move towards. So, you know, remind one one. I, I just haven't utilized it yet, but I, I think it's a pretty cool tool, and so maybe after today I'll set up a group for my class. So. <laughs> Can you tell us about a time you really bombed an attempt to use technology with your students? Y'all are really quiet for some reason. You have to just speak louder. Um, can you tell us tell us a time you really bombed an attempt to use technology with your students? Did you hear the next? She wants to know about something. Yeah, sometimes you try it. Like last time when we tried to do the podcast, oh. 
<laughs> everything failed. So, you know, when you're... Yeah, just, that might actually be our only bomb um, is when we tried to do this little okay. tech video. Um, but for the most part, we try and... When we try to incorporate a new tech technology or a new um, thing with our kids, the biggest thing is that we test it multiple times. We try and implement it with one another first. Um, we try it out, like, say, the message board thing. We tried that three or four times before we actually took it to the class and said, hey, this is something new that we're going to do. Uh, same with the, the review videos. That's something that Davis and I did multiple times before we said, hey, this is what we're going to start incorporating, what we're going to implement. So that is one way that we kind of avoid any technical bombs. <laughs> But yeah, we just we try things multiple times and with new different technologies. And if it doesn't work the first time, we try and find a way to either fix it or do it a different way or alter it slightly. Or if it totally just doesn't work, we try and take that same idea and incorporate it with a different type of technology or you know something along those lines. So no uh, up in front of the class big big time failures or something like that. Well, not that I, I mean, Davis. Can you think of any? Not that I can think of. And the, uh, the biggest thing is is test, 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 test. That way you don't waste your entire day um, waiting. And so once the idea comes and takes hold, then we we'll certainly will do it over and over and over until we've either figured out any problems or um, realized that what our idea is is not uh, technologically uh, ready to be implemented. Or we don't, um, or we don't have the tools. <laughs> yeah, see, I don't know. I mean, I, I did this stuff out. I mean, obviously, we test called like last time before, and everything, and everything was okay. And then, I don't know. Maybe I'm just not as good at testing. I'm sure you test fine. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't us. It was Google. Yeah, we'll just blame it on that. And then on top of that is we are using school district technology to get together. Yeah. Yeah, we'll just blame it on Atlas. Does that work? That was the guy that jumped in the oh, yeah. hangout with us last time oh, that we yeah. didn't know. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's been the uh, running joke with our students, so. <laughs> All right, so I, I kind of cut you off talking about Remind 101. Amy, was there anything else that you were uh, talking about, some of the ways that you use technology in the classroom? Um. Yeah, so... Well, we talked about most of the ways we use it in the classroom with our students. Oh, I guess Moodle was another thing that we use, um, and that's an online thing where they log, they have their own logins, and they log on, and they take quizzes, um, and then they'll say they don't make 100 on the quiz. They will retake the quiz until they take until they get 100, and every time they, they take an attempt at the quiz, it will you know, jumble the answer choices or whatever, so that it's not something that they can go in and write down. Number one was um, B. Number two was C. It mixes it every time, so it forces them to learn the material um, and really get an get a good grasp on what they're learning when they go in and take the test. And I think Richard is trying to show there what Moodle. What Moodle yeah, Moodle like. is uh, is an open source. Um... Um, online educational tool and open source means that anybody can either add to it or, or or add an option to it to where it's a whole bunch of people across the world that are trying to make things better uh, the great thing about Moodle is it's free um, universities use Moodle our, our, our school district fortunately uses Moodle but we can upload uh, PDF files PowerPoint anything that you want to put on there you can also um, set it up to where we use Adobe Captivate, and what uh, Adobe Captivate does is that you're able to um, create quizzes, and those quizzes then change uh, the order of the questions. Also, it changes the order of the answers, but it knows what the correct answers are. So um, um, little Sally might have her answer be A, and Joey over here, it ends up being C, even though that they had different um, answers, they end up, uh, they end up being Correct. It as far as a teacher, we're able to go and look and see exactly what time some of a, that our children have taken the quiz. We're also to see how long it took them to take the quiz. We're also to see 
which questions did they get wrong? So uh, uh, on this one here, it was this question, and then on another one, it was another question. So that ends up being a, a powerful tool because it will teach us as teachers also. We might have a little invalid um, – we might have an invalid question. So Moodle really helps us out as far as uh, being able to give kids quizzes. You can turn it on. You can say, okay, um, you can take it from – five o'clock on Friday but it has to be done at eight o'clock on Monday so they have to follow that that time frame if they don't do it they're not going to get it done but the way that we use Moodle is is that you get as many attempts as you can but you cannot score less than a 100 and if you score less than a 100 on your quiz you have to take it over now the thinking behind that is is that one um, they're going to do it at home so you really think that they're not going to use their notes yeah, they're going to use your notes, but we're trying to teach them the more that you look at your notes, the more successful you will be in your quizzes, the more successful you will be in your test. I would just as soon give you 100 on a quiz, making sure that you saw your notes for 10 minutes that day, than to give you an 80 because you remembered the stuff from class. Go And so that's a, we, don't, we don't accept anything uh, less than a 100. And then when we have quizzes in the class, uh, if it's a handwritten one, then – even though it's old school tech, uh, pen and paper. Uh, if anybody doesn't get 100, the entire class takes the quiz again the next day. So it forces them to sort of um, pick up the books. But Moodle's pretty neat, and we also use Moodle in a concussion course that we created that is um, TEA approved, and on top of that, it um, – is it was, and if I pay the fee again, it was NATA BOC approved for um, for CEUs, and it's the only one that I know of that is actually a two-hour course, and uh, it, it it works sort of like a defensive driver portion, where if you watch the instruction portion, then uh, if you finish that part, you answer yes, you're ready to move on. It marks that in the middle where you don't have to start over again, so you can stop. I'm getting a lot of feedback on this. Yeah, we're hearing a lot of echo from you. I don't know if, if it's maybe from Amy's speakers. I, I, I don't really know, but it's still perfectly understandable. So. Good. Well, so. one, one other thing that we, that we didn't talk about was um, we put all of our flashcards on CDs for our kids. So or on a flash drive, so all those PowerPoint presentations that we have, they can come in and say, hey, can I get, you know, one of the CDs with all of our class notes? So that way, they can't say, oh, I lost my notes or, you know, my dog ate my notes or something like that. They have them. They can take them home, put them in their computers, pull up Chapter 23, and uh, just, just look at their notes that way. So that's a great tool that we started using this year also. You said just putting all the notes on a flash drive? Yep, on either their flash drive the or like a CD, and we'll pass those out. And then gotcha. Yeah, the first part cut out. Which so Richard is trying to show here. We uh, also put them online. We also put them online. And the reason that we put them in PDF is because then that way that any computer, whether it's a Mac computer or whether it is um, a PC, they can get to it. And if you'll see our, our, our screen share there, all of our chapters are on here. So anytime that they want to pick a chapter, they can pick a chapter and the PDF will show up and so they can print it. My whole philosophy on this is no excuses. So if somebody comes in and We'll also print these out and give those to the student. And then they can come in and say, well, I lost it, the dog ate it, whatever. Um, there's a computer in our printing room that is always uh, available for our kids. It's actually hooked up to our printer. They can go to the library. They can do it at home. Um, so that way we're taking those out, of, uh, out of students and telling them that um, – there are no excuses. We're not going to listen to those kind of things that you have to be responsible. Yeah, we, with my class here, most everything that I do, I do on Google Docs, like I said earlier, and so I'll actually just share it with them. So most of them can go to their Google Docs share folder. And, you know, at the beginning of the year, that's one of the things we do is they have to create a, 
a Google account so that they can share this because if you're looking at the show notes right, right now, Michelle and Alejandro are the ones typing in there as well as me at this all at the same time, you know, and so everybody can can look at the same thing at the same time. But it's the same concept for me using Google Docs. I I share it so that they have it if a phone or a computer. But also, I think I need to <clears throat> get better at putting it on our our website. For a while, I I used our website pretty extensively, but then they they changed it on us and it kind of messed everything up. So they changed the website for the web host provider or whatever, whatever. Um, and it kind of like messed up a lot of things. And I was like, you know what? I just don't want to put a bunch of stock into fixing this. So they, and then four years later, they're going to change it all again. So I understand. I, I, we're, I think we're about to do that ourselves. <laughs> so then you have to go through and try and fix everything and find out where the files are and the links are and make sure everything's working. So, but, you know, I guess it's a good way to keep you fresh and knowing where everything is and make sure everything's up to date. So, Have you guys ever used uh, Edmodo? It's like the Facebook for educators. Yeah, I think that's the one that they asked me to look into, and I just, I just didn't like it. I just didn't like it. Yeah, I know that last year or the year before, there was a pretty big push for Edmodo, but, again, I've never really used it with the kids, and so... I just I hadn't much experience, didn't know if you guys did. And I think it does a lot of the same stuff that Moodle does, um, where you can do quizzes. Any of you guys use Edmodo with your classes? Tell me about it real quick, Edith. What is your experience with it? Is it like Facebook? Is it easy to use? Mm, yeah, it's sort of like Facebook, but it's kind of confusing at times. Why? Like when you do like an essay on it, it's kind of confusing to attach the file and then into it and send it to the teacher. All right, so it is kind of like what he was talking about, where you can attach files and take quizzes and stuff like that. So Edmodo may be another option. I don't know if it's open for all teachers or if your school district has to. I'm pretty sure it's free, so maybe your school district has to sign up or at least they have to allow it. Do the. Uh, internet filters, so it may be another option other than Moodle if uh, Moodle is not something that you can work on, because with it being open source, it's... Richard, would you say Moodle is very refined, easy to use? You, for the you, you got to get to you got to get several, several times. Several times. <laughs> yeah. So I'm sure Edmodo is like that too, but I know with a lot of open source stuff, there's a lot of changes, and, and no, the people aren't getting paid... You know, so it's not a pay-for product, so they don't have the, as much a demand as to, to fix it and make it easy like everything Apple is so expensive, but everything Apple works really well together, so. True. True. <coughs> Mr. Venus, what has been your favorite way to use the technology? My favorite way? My favorite way. Um, I really like the I really like videos that we do, um, the review videos for kids and uploading them to our either website or website or YouTube page. That's great, for, That's great. especially if a kid misses a kid misses class or classes that review day, go on and watch that video, go through their notes, highlight what was going to be what was going to be on the test, and then so come test day, and then so come test day, Hey, I missed the review. Can I take it? Um, they know that they're looking for the material. They miss the material. Uh, so that's one great way they can go in there and watch it and catch up with the rest of the class. We've had pretty good success with that. We've had the last couple of times the kids that have been absent um, have been going in there watching They actually do a lot better than the kids that were present on the day of. So that's my favorite way. That's my favorite way. Um, so the kids that watch the video do better than the ones that were there? Um, I love access. Um, I love access. Uh, access is, uh, access uh, is Microsoft's, uh, database, Microsoft's uh, database management. And uh, we're able to do everything. We're able to do everything. Uh, just just um, the simple things is as simple things as importing, uh, importing the the student information information the thing is my whole thing is that you have, you have, have a database database and since you have a database you have a database you should be able to, be able to um, um, not ever have to ever again again and so we don't have so to we don't have to 
we have something that's we have something that is just simple. We take the time of take the time putting everything in it to where it, it, it looks like it looks like a website. Like if we need any time, need any time that we want to do football records, football. we can we can pick it by pick it by however you want. At the end of the year, the when it comes up to be in um, physical, time, physical time, we're able to clear everything out, clear everything out. and then um, once uh, we want to, we want to uh, when the kids go through, kids go through, we just go through and we'll pick. But they new physical, com physical complete. They've only got the they've only got the physical history, history, and we'll just put, we'll just put boxes in there. Boxes in and there. literally, with literally, and after, after the last kid is done, done, we are able to email them to email them exactly, exactly what um how the kid has come the kid has come to physical and and uh, who didn't show who didn't up, show anything, whatever um now um, and, and, um. Uh, 2007, or maybe it was no, maybe it had to be a little earlier. Had to be a little earlier. Um, testing, um, testing. So, uh, somebody asked me that I was working with. They said, "Hey, can you do uh, steroid testing? Steroid testing with raw food because that can be uh, uh, pain, quite a pain." And I said, "Sure." So I. Uh, it took 10 minutes, and it took 10 minutes, you just have to get your grease board out to get your and start drawing on it, and drawing on it, and grease board, and figure out what your end result, what your end result is. And a lot of things with monitors is, is that you know what your end result is, you know what you, is. You know what you have to work with, you, you, you have to start from the end result, end result. Start taking the step, taking the steps back. How do I get this to here? How do I get this to that point, to that point, to that point? And by doing and that, by doing that um, um, it, it took 30 it minutes. We were done. We were done. That, that, that spring, we were called, we were called for drug testing. Drug testing. And lo and behold, and within, within, within the had it inside of the uh, inside the of, and ready to send off. And the people send off. And the people were so fast. So fast. Uh, big deal. Big deal. But, um, uh, one of the things that I learned one time that I learned was one. with Microsoft Access is that. Access is that Sometimes you got to think out of the got to think out of the talking about technology. About technology. Uh, this was way before this was online stuff. So I was wanting to use access to create access to create track programs. So somebody came in, first, they're came gonna in be first, in the prelims. They're going to be the prelims. They're going to be the lane four, lane four, second, then five, etc. So you had to give them to give them a ranking a ranking from one through eight, and then the next and then the next portion of the program rank and then assign them the line. The line, the line, the lane. And I kept having this, kept having this because problem whenever the, because whenever the first prelim would be done, would be done. Access won't access won't at zero and zero and at one. So what you, so what you had, to, had to actually create what's called a query, called a which query. Is a program underneath, program it, underneath it, or um, a, a macro, macro, copy, copy a template, a template, delete the delete original, the original name the template, and put it in, put it in, in, and so to get it to go back to zero. And by learning that one, learning that one. I was able to, able to uh, learn how to do quite a few different things that make the access work that's a whole lot better. Just by better. sometimes you got to think uh, so um, differently when you're talking about computers than what it is that uh, that you would do by wood and paper. Mr. Davis, what are your plans? What plans do you have for taking the sports med class? Okay, one more time. Okay, one more time. What other plans do you have for tech in the sports med classrooms? What we'd like to do, what we'd like to do, if you've seen, if you've seen, if you've seen, if you've seen, if you've seen the review videos, the review videos, what we'd like to do is we'd like to take, like to like to take one, put it out there. But meanwhile, our school district does not, want district does not want our kids, pay for our kids, have. Uh, used to go uh, hang out, to go to hang out, and have a video camera, available, a video camera, but doing anything that is outside that is of the class, side of the class. Otherwise, use other hangouts to record and every, every um um every lecture during the semester, during the semester. and then that way, and that way, when they see the slides, they get to hear the explanation for it. And, and now think of this, think of this. Anytime you're absent, anytime you're absent, not an excuse anymore. I'm sorry, I was I'm sorry, I was having to go to the doctor. I have or whatever, sick or whatever. But now that's gone. Now that's gone because that explanation, that explanation won't work because now it's work because now we all know. We all know. As soon as Google Hangouts is done, Hangouts is done. Five minutes, it's rendered. It's rendered. It's on YouTube. 
So you would so know you, immediately that if you're absent, that if you're absent, you need to go to you class, need to go to class while you're at home. While you're at home, and the great thing is being YouTube is, is that you're able to see it on your iPhone, your iPad, your iPad, your computer, and I know all you guys are not on your telephones. Telephones. That's your lifeline. That's your lifeline. Except Lorena, she broke hers. <laughs> Lorena has an invisible phone. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. Well. Actually, Richard, I know that you've done some stuff with some other websites. You have AT Placement. Um, is it atplacement.com? Yeah. And, and yeah. so you have a pretty, I'd say, in-depth uh, technological background or at least a lot of experience doing it. Um, so do you feel like to the average person, maybe somebody who's been in the profession 10 or 15 years that didn't grow up with, you know, all the phones and the technology when they were in college think, think that some of these things are easy for them to do? The only thing that, lim the only thing that limits you yourself. Uh, when I uh, was when in I was college, in all we had was DOS. DOS. And um, the great thing about the great learning thing about is, learning is that, is that everything that, everything that actually runs on a, a Windows computer is computer still computer running on computer some computer version computer of DOS, which is the boss, maybe just not as much. Not as much. My father at my time, father was probably, was probably 60, years 60 years old, and we would get on the we phone, and we would try to push each other into who could do more with their computer. Their computer. So when he was 55 to 60 years old, he was just learning computers because, you know, they only had a, they only had a, a soup can and screen can and technology back when he was a two-stage as far as communications, and so this really, and this he really kept opening the box, open he the told box. me before um, um, 1995 that what he thought the future of healthcare would be, where would be, each person each would have to have care to, care to, to one database, one database, the database company, the database would, company hold would hold up, and then and put, then a barcode, put a barcode, and send you stickers, and barcodes, stickers with barcodes, and you would take that sticker, and put it in your wallet, and put it in your wallet, and put it in your wallet, or inside your belt. Inside your belt. Any time that you've ever, ever had an accident, ever had an accident where you could speak to the hospital, to the hospital, to the hospital pick up your, your pick up health records and your health records, records and your previous records, um, records um, just by scanning that by scanning that but Now this was now this was you know twenty five you know twenty five years ago or twenty years ago. Thinking holy smokes, thinking holy smokes, he was already thinking that way. These kids, they're gonna tell what they're gonna be able to do. They're gonna like develop an app to to get the to get the space station to stop by the house. So, so yeah, they can do anything they want to do. The only thing that they can do is going to be their imagination. Be their imagination. All right, that's a great uh, party words there. We actually um, there's some popping going on. Who knows if it's on our end? But again, technological fails must be here because you guys don't have them. So yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um. Well, actually, if Renault Richard's going to be uh, helping me out with some stuff on the GHADS website, and and so they also through GHADS you can earn CEUs through for listening to this podcast to learn about how you can use tech in your sports med classroom, um, and some of the other stuff there. And so Josh, I wants to thank some people real quick. We want to thank the people who helped make this broadcast possible. GHADS for sponsoring CEU opportunities, PISD Education Foundation and passing the health clinic CEO, John Swainster. And so then you can check out our website, again, sportsmedicinebroadcast.com. I'll have the show notes up there um, and links to some of the stuff we talked about there. The Almost almost every Wednesday we're live. This is a special one because it's Friday. So you can join the conversation uh, following the links there. Following us on Twitter at PHS Sports Med and Google Plus Sports Medicine Broadcast and facebook.com slash PHS Athletic Training. So again, Richard, Amy, I want to thank you guys for joining us. And so for Jeremy, George, Marlon, Edith, Brianna, Jocelyn, Marissa, Lorena. That's a wrap. All right, so don't, don't end. You can stop the, stop the recordings, but don't, don't end it. Don't end the Hangout. I'll do that in just a second. All right, so sorry if... We kind of ended abruptly, but it's the bell's about to ring for them to go to lunch, so I try to do that while they're still in here. That makes sense. So. That makes sense. All right, well, is there anything else, you guys? Any parting wisdom? Any other questions or thoughts you guys had? 
Um, what, what is one thing? What is one thing? thing? We did talk about the uh, Dropbox. Oh, yeah, we didn't really talk about that. How do you do your do you emergency do your alert? alert? Sorry, I'm sorry. I'm just knocking and knocking and rude. All right, so our emergency, we use rank one. Uh, it's the district. That's what we do. You know, we're, there's five high schools, so we all use rank one. Um, and what we do here at Pasadena is with the emergency card, the kids fill it out, and then we scan it and put it into rank one so that the coaches can easily access that or, or we can print it off there without having to come and pull the files back out. And I know we're actually looking into transitioning to the digital physicals uh, through rank one, but we're just not there yet. So what did what do you so guys you're do? Scanning like six so you're scanning like six hundred. Uh, yep, pretty much. And that takes you a week and because each takes one you a week you because each one and then go open up and then go stay. Yeah, well, something like that. I mean, there it's on the front of the on the front of the deal, but I mean, it's it's we have the paper copies, and so that's what we have to do. So. I know it's so tedious. I know it's so tedious. And when you leave us here, she she wanted to she get away from us carrying um, hard copies. Uh, hard copies. So, so what I said is I said okay, that's fine. Okay, that's the okay, that's that's way that I don't have to retype. I don't have to retype everybody's name six hundred times. And so and so here here with the screen share that you're able to see. So when we, so when we let's say we scan say we scan physical, physical and they'll know that you can do that in Adobe, but then Adobe, Adobe, but then Adobe, Adobe can also put them, them off in a one page physical. And so when it does, it ties it that part, part one, part two, et cetera, et cetera. So then you go into rank one and pull everybody's name out of name cell phone, cell phone, and put that in the rank and the dot, and the dot, and then you put this little thing up there. It's going to can, uh, whatever this is, whatever this is. And what it tells it to do is it to render. This in A1. All right, and then give it this in B1 dot PDF, and then you'll copy, copy, and then you would take it into um, DOS, DOS, go into the file in DOS, and you have to go to the directory and etc. And then you hit control. You have to hit. You have to hit. Is it control Z? Is it control Z? Anyway, so then it pasted it, and it pasted it, 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 all your kids changes all your kids immediately. I think we lost everybody. I think we lost everybody. I uh, know. I'm, I'm still here. But I'll send but you I'll this. I'll make you better. All right. So you do that on Dropbox, but um, <clears throat> one of the things about having no paper copies is the EMS, don't they require a paper copy? Because they're not going to just take a digital copy, right? Uh, we put them in Dropbox and Dropbox get those, they can get those digital copies. So on Dropbox, you just get the EMS person's email and share it with them, or what? Exactly. What if they don't have Dropbox? They better get it. Is it just emailed to them, or? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, it's just on your, on your computer, and then well, well, the, invitation the invitation is emailed to them, and then they accept. Okay. Yeah, well, I mean, that's, you know, obviously we don't go to every single game, so at a JV game that's at HISD, where they don't have an athletic trainer, if they have to have an emergency card, they go, all the coaches will have it that way, because we always print them off, put them in a, in a little binder, so they have them there, but I'm... Definitely interested in ways that make it easier, and I'm really interested in uh, the digital or the online physical forms. But you said you're still working on that yourself, so. Well, the well, the thing you have to do is just have the um, 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 AD or the integration to approve. But I think Amy just, just got locked out. Got locked out. <laughs> oh, now oh, she has, now a, she key. has a key. So you're just waiting on the 
approval. Waiting on the approval. There is a software Carol uses that does not all of their paperwork is digital. It's digital. Yeah, and I, uh, I saw that and I emailed the people, but we use rank one. And so they, we wouldn't want to have to use a separate system for that. And so Rank 1 actually has a physical, the online physical form, so. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's I mean, that physical form. Do you have to print it off to, print it to the physician? Is that, is that what you're saying? Uh, well, the physician would have to take that one, or you would have to take that one piece of paper to the physician, and then we'd scan that in, so. Gotcha. Gotcha. So instead of it being... A four-page thing with two inserts. It would just be a one page, one piece of paper that we have to handle, and that's easy enough to get from the doctor. Parents and kids can sign everything else online. Hopefully. Hopefully. Yeah, and then you know, yes. you eliminate some of the headaches of it coming back with uh, missing blanks and that kind of stuff. So, yeah, that's the thought, yeah. anyways. Well, we took ours this year. Well, we took a comprehensive a comprehensive signature. Yeah. Trying to eliminate having to eliminate having signatures on every page. Hmm. I don't know. All right. Well, anything else? I think we're good. I think we're good. Hey, this is work. Of <laughs> course. <laughs> At least it is for me. I don't know. It's part of my class. Gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. All right. Well, hey, I appreciate y'all joining us. And I know Amy's ducked out for a minute to probably take care of an athlete or run somebody out or something. So. Uh, yeah. 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 She, she would run them out. So. All right. Well, again, thanks for joining us. Y'all have a good day. I'll talk to you soon about some of the other stuff. Okay. We're okay. Here. We're here. All right. All right. Bye. Bye, Amy. Right. Bye. Bye, Richard.